what's up guys welcome back to another video this is a reaction to even more interesting us islands he's done quite a lot of these island videos i've reacted to one a couple weeks ago and it was really interesting to see these like islands that are just either off the us or within the actual like mainland us or whatever it is because they'll have all these different variations some will look tropical some will just i guess just be like for the scenery some will have like towns and cities on them and it's just like a, a mixture of different islands but yeah we're going to check this out and see some more of these islands throughout the u.s because i guess with like for example alaska you're going to have so many islands just there alone that will be pretty cool and have their own sort of quirks to them but we're going to check this out and see some of these u.s islands and yeah hopefully going to enjoy links are in the description to my patreon where you can see reactions that i can't post to youtube but yeah let's jump into this reaction more geography king man he smashes it with these videos by the way he's so good howdy it's kyle talking about some interesting islands in the u.s this is the second installment in a series where i take a look at some islands that are notable or have some unique aspects to them and i'll leave a link in the description to part one in this series but this is part two even more interesting islands in the u.s i'm going to start off by talking about rhode island Certainly, we all know the state with that name, but there actually is a Rhode Island that is part of the state. So here's a map of the state of Rhode Island, and this island here in the bay is Rhode Island. Oh. The original name of the state was Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, and that referred to the island here, which had the largest population center of the colony, plus this interior area that was part of the Providence Plantations. But most people in the state refer to the actual island that is Rhode Island by its indigenous name, which is Aquidneck Island. It's about 38 square miles or 98 square kilometers, and at the most recent census had a population of about 60,000 people. Oh, it's a The lot. largest town on the island is Newport. That is a beautiful town. Looks very... Vic is Victorian the right word? Look at this. Like The buildings look very, like, so, I don't want to say... I guess they look somewhat southern. But then the cobblestone looks very Victorian. The lights look Victorian. This is a really cool street. Port with about 25,000 people. And this was the old colonial capital of the state where you have the oldest buildings from the 17th century. It's also home to Naval Station Newport, which houses the Undersea Warfare Center and Autonomous Submarine Research. And the yeah. island is also home to some exclusive clubs with some private beaches. So even though we refer to the entire state as Rhode Island, originally Rhode Island was just this small island, Aquidneck Island. That's pretty cool. Next, I'm going over to Michigan and to Belle Isle. This is an island located in the Detroit River, which is the border between the U.S. and Canada with the city of Detroit and Windsor, Ontario. It's been linked to Detroit since 1923 with a bridge, and it's also an old fountain there for 1925. It's home to the aquarium, botanical garden, nature center and maritime museum there's a riverfront beach some playgrounds for kids and a golf it's got a whole road system there as well of course and it's also home to the detroit yacht club and sailing club Jeez. also the island will often host indie car races and this is That's a street cool. race not one of the big oval ones so there's quite a bit of stuff going on on bell isle if you're going to visit detroit having an entire island hosting some indie car racing is unreal you'll probably end up on the island at some point a lot of cool things to see there next i'm going to the west coast and vashon island washington this is an island located in the south end of the puget sound very close to seattle and tacoma washington right in the middle of the metro area and this is a rather large island as well it's about 37 square miles or 96 square kilometers but despite being that large in the middle of a major metro area, the population is only about 11,000 people. And the population was only 10,000 people back in 2000, so not much population growth at all on Vashon Island, even though there's been a ton of population growth in the Seattle metro area during that same time. There are no bridges that oh lead to the island, gosh. just ferries. But to give you an idea of just how much this island fits right. into the Seattle metro area, there will be public buses that go on the ferry and then drive on Vashon Island once it gets there. It's also, strangely enough, one of the least vaccinated places in the U.S. It's known for having occasional outbreaks of measles and whooping cough. 
It what seems to be very NIMBY and anti-vax. So if you're from the Seattle metro area, let me know what people's thoughts are on Vashon Island. Damn, I was not Heading that. back east, I'm going to City Island in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. There's one vehicular bridge that goes over it and one pedestrian-only bridge that leads to it. And this island has a long history of having sports stadiums and fields. It's Wait, there was sports stadiums on this island? That, that is really cool. It's currently home to the Harrisburg Senators, which is a minor league baseball team. That is, I see, I love this sort of stuff. Imagine they turned this island into like a, a sporting hotspot, like where they have like the football stadiums, the baseball stadiums like we see, the minor league. Obviously, I don't know if there's enough space for all this stuff, but that would be cool as hell. Don't know how possible it would be for like the parking and stuff, but I like the idea. They play in a stadium that's built on the same site of an older baseball stadium. The original team that played there was a Negro League team going back to the 1890s, and they played there until 1928. After that, the original Harrisburg Senators, which was a white minor league team, played there until 1943. So the new Harrisburg Senators minor league team uses the old team's name, but also on the island are other sports fields, volleyball courts, a miniature golf course, and an old-timey carousel. It's always interesting when you have an Football. island and a river that goes right through a city, but this one being used almost exclusively as a sporting venue for almost 150 years makes it quite unique. That is pretty cool. Going back to the Midwest, I'm going to French Island, Wisconsin. This is located just northwest of the city of La Crosse in the Mississippi River, which is the state line between Minnesota and Wisconsin, although the island itself is on the Wisconsin side. And just a stone's throw away from the western edge of the island are some other islands in the river, but those are part of Minnesota. It's about four square miles or 10 square kilometers and has a population of about 4,200 people located in the town of Campbell. And the island was named after a guy with last name French, not by French settlers, although there were French Canadian settlers that came later. There is a bridge and exit for Interstate 90, which allows access to the island. And about 50% of the area of the island is used for the La Crosse Regional Airport. Damn. This is a fairly small airport that has daily flights to Chicago and the Twin Cities. But nonetheless, kind of an odd choice for the placement of an airport. So there are a lot of islands in Wisconsin, but you normally associate them with Lake Superior, but there are some islands in the Mississippi River, including French Island. Heading over to Lake Erie, I'm going to South Bass Island, Ohio. This is the southernmost of the three Bass Islands in Lake Erie, with the other ones being North Bass and Middle Bass Islands. South Bass Island is about three miles away from the shore. Closest towns are Port Clinton and Sandusky. There are no bridges to the island. The only access is by ferry or by small airstrip. And there are no cars on the island itself, but golf carts are pretty popular. Oh, wow. The main town on the island is Put in Bay, which is a very popular spot. This looks unreal. I feel like in the summer, this place would be absolutely stunning. For visitors. Like it looks now. In the late spring to early fall. There are a lot of restaurants and nightlife, some shopping, a lot of swimming pools and going out in the lake but it's feast or famine as the island basically shuts down in the winter. There are about 150 permanent residents on the island and during the winter there is an ice bridge that connects it to the mainland. Oh, on the island is Perry's Monument and the International Peace Memorial. This is a monument to the Battle of Lake Erie in 1813 where the US Navy used South Bass Island as an anchorage point. Today there's a monument there that stands at 352 feet or 107 meters. It's the world's tallest dork column and one of the tallest non-skyscraper type structures in the U.S. Heading out to the far northwest, I'm going to Kodiak Island, Alaska. This is the largest island in the U.S. after the big island in Hawaii. It's about 3,600 square miles. There are about 13,000 people that live on the island, with about 5,600 living in the largest town of Kodiak. There is no bridge to the island, wow. but there is a ferry and there is an airport on the island. Look at that. And this island is home to the largest U.S. Coast Guard base as well as a communications and navigation station. And based on where it's located at the south end of the state, it doesn't get as cold in the winter as you might think. In the town of Kodiak in January, the average high is 36 degrees. Two-thirds of the island is home to the Kodiak Bro, National... Look at these. Look at these bits of scenery. Crazy. Wildlife refuge. 
Is there someone camping here as well? Imagine camping here or something like that. That would be crazy. It was just a huge spawn point for salmon and a big flyover area for birds. Probably what the island is most well known for are the Kodiak brown bears, which are the largest brown bears in the world. Size they that range thing. in weight between about 660 and 1300 pounds. Bloody and hell. the only bears larger than these in the world are polar bears. And salmon fishing, along with king crab harvesting, is the largest part of the economy there. So, Kodiak Island, big island, big Coast Guard base, big bears. And are these the crabs that you get here as well? That is a big boy. Big Bull crabs. Bell. From northwest to northeast, I'm going to Fisher's Island, New York. This is a small island, about four square miles or ten and a half square kilometers, with a permanent population of about 420 people. And this is a popular destination for summer weekends. There are 600 housing units there, but again, only about 420 people, so most of the houses there are rentals. And even though this island is officially part of New York, it's much more closely associated with Connecticut. So you can see where it's located here. It's only 2 miles from Connecticut, 2 miles from Rhode Island, but 11 miles from Long Island, New York. A long time ago, there was a dispute between New York and Connecticut as to who owned the islands, and courts ruled that it went with New York. Damn. But Connecticut is where most of the visitors in the summer come from, and it's also who owns most of the second homes on the island. And to go along with it being more closely associated with Connecticut, there's a New England zip code for the island that starts with a zero. The closest post office is in Connecticut, and the mail to the island is delivered from that office. And there's actually no direct access to the island from New York, not even by ferry. The only ferry comes from Connecticut. So for just about everything except for official residency, Fisher's Island belongs to Connecticut, but it's actually part of New York. Going back to the Midwest and back to the Mississippi River, I'm going to Choteau Island, Illinois. This is located in the part of the river that is the state line between Missouri and Illinois, and Choteau Island is located about 10 miles north of the St. Louis Arch. And this is just south of the confluence of the Missouri and the Mississippi River, and this island is considered part of Illinois. This stretch of the river is known for having some low water, and often there are some rocks exposed, referred to as a chain of rocks, so there was a small canal built across it so ships don't have to deal with it. Okay. But during the process of... What is this thing? so confused what is this just standing in the middle of the ocean or not or in the water there was oh, a ocean. small canal built across it so ships don't have to deal with it but during the process of digging out the canal some of the infill led to the formation of Shoto island which was really an extension of the island that was already there and the total island now including the natural part and the infill part from the canal is about seven square miles or 18 square kilometers so this is a pretty large river, but because of flooding concerns, there's really no development on there, and there's mostly a park and some areas you can walk around with some trails. Next, I'm going to another river island, this time Pea Patch Island in the Delaware River in Delaware. Pea Patch This is island. located near the mouth of the Delaware River, and this is the state line between Delaware and New Jersey. These two states argued about who owns this island, and the courts decided that Delaware owns it. The island was originally used as a naval fort to protect the mouth of the river from invasion. The original Fort Delaware was built in 1815 but later burned. The current fort standing there now was built in 1860. It was rebuilt as a fort to hold Confederate prisoners from the Battle of Gettysburg. However, the military decommissioned the fort and abandoned it in 1944 and ownership transferred to the state of Delaware and it became Fort Delaware State Park in 1951. So this is a state park? This is another spot where there was some land dredged around the island and some of the leftover infill increased the size of the island. And with it being a protected state park, it's a huge area for bird migration. It's the number one spot in the northern U.S. for herons. So despite oh, wow. the history and the birds, I think the best part of this island is the name, Pea Patch <laughs> Island. Going just south of there, I'm going to Assateague Island in Maryland and Virginia. This is a barrier island about 37 miles or 60 kilometers long, but only about one mile wide. Most of it is in Maryland, but some of it is in Virginia. The Maryland portion is Assateague Island National Seashore, and the Virginia portion is Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge, but the entire island is protected in one Look at that. That is such a strange shape. One way or another through National Park Service, National Wildlife Refuge, or a state park. 
It's mainly swampy marshlands on the bay side with some beaches on the Atlantic side. There's camping on the Maryland side. You can do some paddling there. And like many other wildlife refuges, it's a major area for migratory birds. But perhaps what the island is most known for are the feral horses. The what? horses actually have different names depending on the state. They're the Assateague horses. What, so they're just horses just roaming the land freely? That's pretty cool. In Maryland and Chincoteague ponies in Virginia. There are about 230 horses total on the island, and these have been feral for centuries. These are not recent runaways from a ranch. Damn. They arrived with Spanish explorers in the 17th century, or perhaps as early as even the 16th century. An interesting factoid about the island is that there is a bridge that leads to it from the mainland. It's called the Verrazano Bridge, and it's named after the same Italian explorer as the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which connects Staten Island to Brooklyn. Heading back to the west coast, I'm going to Treasure and Yerba Buena Islands in the San Francisco Bay. These are technically... This is a tiny island. One island connected by a causeway road, but Treasure Island is artificial, Yerba Buena Island is natural. Okay. They're just under a square mile or just over two square kilometers, making it the second largest island in the bay just after Angel Island. Treasure Island was created in 1937 for a 1939 international exposition. And what this island was going to showcase was going to be new advancements in engineering, new building technologies, new bridges. What the so heck? the idea was here's some new building technologies on this artificial island. I mean, this is a pretty cool image. The, the, the skyline and stuff, but I don't really know what's going on on this island. In 1942, at the beginning of World War II, the island was transferred over to the U.S. Navy and it remained a naval island until 1997. And that was when it was transferred to public use along with the Presidio in the city. Interstate 80, which is the new Bay Bridge, goes right over Yerba Buena Island and there's an exit to access it. But because it is a fairly large island right next to the city with really not much on it, it's been proposed as a site for new housing. Damn. So people are going to be living here. Maybe it's going to have its own area, like city area. So there's a winery, whatever, I guess it's just for wine. But damn, they're going to make like neighborhoods and stuff here. That's pretty cool. I believe there's a new building going up that's going to have over 100 condos. Oh, they're making some big apartments. And there are other proposed plans that are kind of tied up with discussions and legal kind of stuff right now. And if done right, this could be a really cool urban development right there in the bay. Oh, for sure. And for the last island I'll discuss in this video, I'm going back to Michigan and Mackinac Island. It's located in Lake Huron near the Straits of Mackinac, which is where the upper and lower peninsulas of Michigan meet. It's about 4.5 square miles or 11 square kilometers. And even though that's fairly small, the high point on the island is 890 feet or 271 meters. The entire island is a historic landmark. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's home to many Victorian era buildings, including the huge Grand Hotel. Also on the same island was Fort Holm. This is a hotel. This is massive. What the heck? When was this built? It looks very like old style. Which was another British fort used during the War of 1812. But once it transferred to US civilian use, a handful of people started to move there. There are approximately 600 people that live on the island year-round. It's mostly a summer resort town. It's a car-free island, but you can use snowmobiles in the winter on an ice bridge connecting it to the lower peninsula. During the tourist season, you can take a ferry, a private boat, or a tiny airplane. But you also have some interesting physical features on the island, including sugarloaf. See, this looks unreal again. This is just on a small island in the U.S., and this is just unreal. And arch rock. A fun fact is that Michigan State Highway 185 is on the island. It's, it's got an airport, I think you already said that. It's the only highway in the country that has no motorized vehicles on it. But what the island might be the most known for is its fudge. Mackinac oh. Island Fudge is a pretty famous brand and there's a big fudge festival in August. So with military history, Victorian era buildings, natural features, and a lot of fudge, Mackinac Island packs a lot of punch for a small place. Yeah, for a small island, it's made a lot for itself. That's pretty cool. So that was even more interesting islands in the U.S. Check back in the near future for ones where I talk about some even more. I just, I reacted to one, I think, a few weeks ago. 
and I don't know if I've done a reaction to one ages ago, so I'm going to have to see, because I know he's got another one, he's got three that he's posted, and if I've not reacted to it, I'm definitely going to react to that soon, because I find this stuff so cool to see. All terrific islands, but only one has fudge. As a Seattleite, is that what they're called? Seattleite. Um, I guess it is. You absolutely nailed Vashon Island. Video idea, court cases that impacted US state land claims. That's an interesting one. Thank you, thank you for featuring Bell Island in this video. US Detroiters are very proud of it. There we go. Uh, but yeah, these islands are very cool. And again, if you're someone who's, I guess, lives on one of these islands or pre from the previous video, like you've been to these islands or you've lived there or whatever, just throughout the US, you've lived on an island actually, not just one of these ones. How is like the sort of just like life in general must be so different. Because you're sort of living, I don't want to say you're living in a bubble, but it's just like, for example, some of these, he says there's no access, like there's no car access, which is pretty cool because I guess it means people are going to be walking more, but also I guess golf buggies and stuff. But then that's so different to the US. I just, it's just interesting how that's the case. But I guess when they're such small islands, there's no point to have cars and stuff like that. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. Let me know your thoughts on this. And until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.